Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's words to you today. Now, this is a new week, and we, we've been talking about the true light, and I've been sharing different aspects of God's thoughts when it comes to you shining or allowing the true light to shine through you. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Now, it's significant to or important for us to really think on that statement that Jesus made. I am the light of the world. And that's what we'll be looking at. And this week, I'm trusting the Spirit of God that He will direct our minds to some practical ways that uh, we should begin to look at life through this light, which is Christ Jesus. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? I told you the Lord instructed us to do this. And as you release your faith, trust me, a miracle is surely going to happen. Are you ready? Join me right now as we release our faith. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Believe me when I tell you a miracle is happening to you today. Praise God. Something good is happening around you. The Lord is bringing that thing that you so desire today. Believe me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. All right. Now, I want us to look at some thoughts. You know, I told you towards the end of last week that it's important that you study the words written in red in your Bible if you have a red letter edition. Thank God these days, even the electronic version that we have on our phones, they sure made it red letter edition also. So you can, you can just look at the words in red, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You remember I told you, especially what you find in Matthew and John. I told you why. Because these were the two people that were present when Jesus taught what he taught and spoke what he spoke. Praise God. So this Matthew and, and, and John were not um, writing what they were told. They were writing what they experienced. Now Luke and Mark, not because their words are not true or accurate. It's accurate. But you see, there is something about being a first witness. See that now your, your, your communication will be different. That's why when you look at the Gospels, you see the communication of Matthew is different from John, especially John. Now, I told you last week, uh, John, between John and Matthew, John focused more on the personality of Jesus. So he, he was able to pull out a lot of tough things that Jesus said because John was concerned about the audacity that Jesus had as the Son of God. You see that now? That was the purpose of him writing. He even concluded by saying that these things are written that you will believe, see? And believing, you will have faith in his name. That was John's focus. He wasn't just writing a story other people have written. But John just felt, hey, I think I should pull out some very important things that Jesus said. Others wrote the stories about his life. And in the process, they quoted him. See that now? But John wrote, the way John wrote his stories always was to project what Jesus said. For example, the woman Jesus met at the well. Now, the story wouldn't have been, been important to John if not for the things that Jesus shared. See that now? Now, you say, but, but the disciples were not there. How did John know what Jesus shared? Jesus must have told him. No, it's as simple as that. Praise God. Jesus must have told him. See that now? And, and because... 
you know, sometimes people just read these things and think it's some abstract. The same experiences we go through today is the same experience they went through in terms of dealing with um, people and, and, and handling a leader and a leader handling a follower. See that now? The, the, the opportunities somehow are always the same. See that? So, John wrote about that story, not because of the woman, but because of the things Jesus shared. See that? He wrote about the woman caught in the act of adultery, not because he wanted to major on the woman. No, he majored on what Jesus said to her. Now, that's John's concern. Praise God. Now, but today, we're going to be looking at um, what Jesus said that Matthew captured. Um, very, very important. I told you, we're going to get practical into walking in the light. So, Matthew chapter 6 and from verse 19. Matthew 6 and from verse 19. This is Jesus speaking. And he said, something very very important here he says do not lay up for yourselves treasures in on earth now look at this one now remember this is the light of the world that is speaking so he said do not lay up treasures for yourself on earth do not now he says do not do not means do not now, you know, we've got to get to that point where we believe in Jesus. To believe in Jesus is not that, oh, I believe in Jesus. No, sir. It is to look at his word and say, say to yourself, Jesus said these words and I believe it. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. So now he said, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moat and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal don't lay your treasures treasures means wealth treasures means everything that's so important he says he do not lay now now you would want to think maybe jesus would have said don't lay your major treasures on it. He says, do not lay for yourself treasure on it. Don't lay it. Wow. <laughs> Look at what he said in verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moat nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also now as preachers we've majored very much on verse 21 where your treasure is is where your heart will be also but we've not really really analyzed what jesus said before that because now we think or we communicate it to mean that jesus wants our hearts to be in heaven not on earth so that's why he's telling us no Jesus stated the reason. He says, look, if you lay it on earth, you're going to lose it. Why will you lose it? Moats are there to destroy it. Rust will affect it. Not as wear and tear will affect it. Then he says, if you lay it in heaven. Now, first and foremost, Jesus is letting us know now. I will say this again. The light. Now, allow me when we're talking. As I'm sharing, I'll use the term or the phrase, the light. See, now when I say the light, I'm referring to Jesus because he is the light of the world. And remember our background in this, anything that is not done in him, anything that is not done because of him, anything that is not done through him is darkness. So where he gives a clear word about and then you go against it, you are walking in darkness. It's as simple as that. So he says, do not lay up for yourself treasure 
here on earth. Don't lay it because you will lose it. It will wear and tear will affect it. It will get old. That's what it says. It says modes will destroy it, meaning to get old and get out of fashion. See, then he says lay it in heaven. So Jesus here or the light here is letting us see that there is a way that we can pay up our treasures in heaven. See that now? Now, first and foremost, you've got to have treasure first. And Jesus is not saying, don't have treasures. No. So anyone who thinks Jesus didn't teach or believe in prosperity, it's not accurate because of this statement. So Jesus is saying, don't lay your treasure on earth, but lay it in heaven. Now, he was referring to people that will have access to lay their treasure in heaven. You see that now? You, you don't tell someone who, who has no means of making money how to bank his money. Do you do that? No, you don't. You don't go to a broke man and say, look, let me tell you how to invest your money. <laughs> no, you will go to someone who has the money. So Jesus wasn't talking to broke people here. Praise God. Now, when I mean broke people, he's not talking to people who he calls broke. The fact that you don't have money today doesn't mean you're broke. But Jesus was talking to you. You've got treasure treasures praise god so now you he, he's talking to those who have access to lay up their treasure in heaven and he's also talking to people who have access to lay up their treasure on earth so like i said first there is a treasure to lay up now when he says lay up he's talking about the surplus you understand what I'm saying? So he says, don't bank your treasure here on earth because you will lose it. But bank it in heaven. So now it's, 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 you see, everything Jesus said, I want you to understand something. Jesus clearly told us that he's not going to tell us everything. But there is someone who is coming after him and that's the Holy Spirit. And he says, when he comes, he will teach us all things. Now, what, what, Jesus taught some things, right? Okay. Now, he says, wait for the Holy Spirit to come. He told the disciples, don't go anywhere. Stay in one place and wait for the promise of the Father. Meaning, until he comes, don't try to do anything. And then God, they obeyed him. Why? He had given them several commands. He has told them a lot of things to do. So why would he not say, don't do anything until the Holy Spirit comes? I'll tell you why. Number one, the Holy Spirit, for example, this, this statement here is not a teaching. It's a command. It's not a teaching. Do not lay up for yourself treasures here on earth, but lay it up in heaven. It's a command. Right? Okay. Now, Jesus gave this command. Then the question arises. So, how do we lay up treasure in heaven? He didn't answer it. <laughs> Praise God. Now, this is where I want you to understand something about the teachings of Jesus. The teachings of Jesus, even though sometimes, that's why he also said, this is why I teach in parables. Matthew chapter 13, he said that. He said, this is why I teach in parables. So there are some people I don't want to understand what I'm saying. That's literally what he said. So Jesus would teach and someone tried to analyze it, analyze it, analyze it. And mm, this man is just blabbing. He doesn't even know what he's saying. What do you mean? Lay up to, so how will I not carry my money and be going to heaven to lay it up? Now, this is where some people got the idea that Jesus must be referring to, you know, like they say, when you give, you're building your house in heaven. Have you heard statements like that before? You're building your house in heaven. You're building your mansion in heaven. So 
the more you give, the more you build your mansion in heaven. So that when you get to heaven, and then this is the information that is passed down. When you get that soul, somebody died and went to heaven, or someone had a near-death experience and went to heaven. And when he got to heaven, he was very rich here on earth. So he got to heaven and the angel was taking him around and showing him, oh, this is so-so person's house. Wow! This is this person's house. Wow, wow. So he was waiting excitedly to see his own house compared to what he was living here on earth. He, he just felt, man, my house is going to be super beautiful. And then they took him to one small hut and said, here is your house. Like, what? How? And then the angel now said, it was small money you gave. So this is what your money could be raised. <laughs> now we hear all those kind of things. It sounds funny. It's tickling to the ears, but you know, you know, you heard those things many years ago. But then after a while, after some years, you looked at that same story and you began to wonder how foolish you were to have believed that story. Praise God. So now we have to be very, very careful. You know, when people give us all this experience that, oh, I went to heaven, and then they begin to describe things that they saw in heaven and and tell you all those wonderful things. Now, take those things, I'll tell you this truth. Take those things with a pinch of salt. Praise God. Because even, even those who said, you know, they died and then they went to heaven and then they saw Jesus, you know, and then they, they, they start, they, they, you know, they said, oh, went to heaven, saw Jesus, and, you know, lots of things we have believed and then they described jesus for you you know and then you realize that the description of jesus they are giving is some fantastic out of the world thing but hey i said take those things with a pinch of salt <laughs> it's good because now when we see jesus yeah, Ali <laughs> You know, how do I explain this to you now? Because my time is up. <laughs> it's God. Oh yeah, my time is up. Let, let me see. Let, I, I pray the Holy Spirit will help me express this. Because um I need to help some of you. <laughs> it's good. But not today. Let's see if the Lord will permit us to get in there tomorrow. I pray for you right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That the Lord will open your understanding today and birth in you His light and truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, go out today and have a wonderful day. Praise God.